the finals of the men and women African Cup of Nations, it's always frenetic. On days such as this, there are no tribes, no religion. Here, Nigerian warriors are around to represent, to show the skills that makes us the best. On days like this, the color is one. The color is green. When we get the job done, it is because we have stuck together. When we celebrate, we stand together. Children from disadvantaged homes are free from the destructive effects of malnutrition and distraction as they learn. The strategy sets out simply how the federal, state and local governments are to work together to deliver the primary objectives of the program, namely the feeding of children in primary schools with healthy, nutritious meals prepared from local agricultural produce. The vice president said the federal government is committed to ensuring that all the benefits become real and bring desirable change in the lives of the people and in communities. 500 billion naira of the 6 trillion naira 2016 budget will go into the program. The federal government is just a partner in a value chain of those to implement the school feeding program. It will also include development partners, financial institutions, educational institutions and the civil society. The strategic plan will only work when we imbibe a new level of cooperation between the federal, state and local governments. Much lessons have been drawn from the experience of the two states presently operating the school feeding program in Nigeria, Oshun and Kaduna states, and especially from a global school feeding source book with lessons from 14 countries which Oshun state featured as a case study. What we're looking for is support. With border on the economy, state of the nation, security, anti-corruption drive, unemployment, among others. What we fail to do, all of us really, is to really address the real cause. Boko Haram is not about religion. Boko Haram is more about politics, more about you know, a group of people trying to impose them, their views. Boko Haram has been able to thrive largely because of poverty, ignorance, bad government. And today, the military has told us that we have complete control of Sambisa Forest. And that is the last you know, uh, fortress of the Boko Haram. I think we, we, we certainly are discussing the economy, but we can do more and uh, we'll certainly try to do more. In the trips that the president has, has taken, the economic issues for many of them have been at the forefront. There is what government is doing and we are public servants and it's a privilege to be one. But context matters and the truth of it is that everyone has a role and responsibility. And so I hope that these dialogues go to the other constituencies in this global family for sustainable development. We're looking at asking for a unit of the civil defense to train what we're going to call farm rangers to protect investments in livestock and heavy investments in agriculture. That was the mood in the Red Chamber as senators congratulated one another for successfully coming to the end of the first session in a four-year tenure. The special plenary session commenced with Nine, Senate five, President seven. Abubakar Bukola Saraki reading out an executive communication Most from President Muhammadu Buhari okay. on his nomination of 47 career ambassadorial nominees. The Senate President addressed the senators highlighting the performance of the Apex Legislature in the first year and the direction it plans to follow in subsequent years. For us, it is our first priority to use lawmaking as a tool to play our part in the struggle to ensure that the welfare and security of our people remains paramount. Senators thereafter took turns to assess their achievements and challenges. Plenary, Dogar explained that the House pursued its legislative activities with so much commitment. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Mkwo reports. Thursday, the 9th of June marks the end of the first legislative year of the 8th House of Representatives. 
in commemoration of the journey. Speaker Yakubu Dogara congratulated members and thanked them for the trust reposed in him by appointing him. Honorable colleagues, as we look back to that day, it remains for me a great honor and exceptional privilege to serve you as the speaker. I still tremble when I recall or reflect on the trust and confidence you reposed in us to lead this great chamber. By the grace of God, we shall not let you down. Dogara assured Nigerians that the House is committed, complementing the change agenda of the present administration as evidenced in its legislative agenda. The introduction of electronic voting by the House is still in progress, and the use of emails to send copies of the notice paper and other paper to honorable members has been achieved. The House is working hard to establish the National Assembly House of Representatives radio and television station for better access to legislatures as we committed. On budgetary matters, we are happy to report that the commencement clause of the 26 2016 statutory budget for the territory before the Senate Committee on FCT. National Assembly correspondent Grace Oyenubi reports that 62% of the amount is for capital expenditure, 22 for personnel cost, while 16% is for overhead. After the presentation of the appraisal of the FCT 2015 193.8 billion statutory budget and framework of 2016 by the FCT Director of Treasury, Ibrahim Bomai, most of the lawmakers agreed the proposed internally generated revenue of $125.4 billion for 2016 is ambitious while asking other questions. You have not given us uh, ideas, or maybe you have some structures New areas. on how you intend to generate this 125 Very, very important. I don't think anybody talking about Aja in Nigeria today in Nigeria today, with the way the economy is, and the projection we have seen, will generate 40, 40 or 50 percent of IGA. I want to say that last year was an election year. This year is more stable, and frankly speaking, our inland revenue service, based on what they have recovered from January to for the first quarter, it is on that basis that we made the computation and focus. I don't see how the FCT in the entire 2015 would have generated just 21 billion. As, as one body who will be able to defend and protect the interests, the collective interests of all uh, Nigerians in this regard. This uh, investigation is going to be extremely very exhaustive, after which we'll go into the full clear public uh, hearing where all the IOCs and the relevant stakeholders and the NMPCs will be called upon to explain and also equally express themselves um, accordingly. The chairman of the Joint Senate Committee, Basi Albert Akman, and all the members expressed the hope that a comprehensive investigation on the matter will arm the Senate with adequate information that will engender an effective policy framework to reposition the sector, as well as promote accountability in the industry. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. The House of Representatives Committee on Industry has pledged to work with the Industrial Training Fund to achieve its mandate. Chairman of the committee, Abubakar Moriki, said this when he visited the ITF headquarters on oversight. Side visit is a fallout of previous interactions with the management staff of the ITF. Chairman of the committee, Abubakar Moriki, noted that in view of its strategic place in driving skills acquisition and mass employment agenda of the federal government, the committee will support any... Moving on, President Muhammadu Buhari has appointed his special advisor on planning, Mr. Ben Akabwezi, as the new Director General of the Budget Office of the Federation. A statement from Presidential Spokesman Femi Adishino says Mr. Akabwezi takes over from Mr. Tijani Mohamed Abdullahi, 
who will now serve as Special Advisor to the President on Planning and will continue to work with the Minister of Budget and National Planning. Both Mr. Akabweze and Abdullahi joined the Ministry of Budget and National Planning in February this year. Their deployment is part of an ongoing exercise aimed at further repositioning the ministry to effectively deliver on its core mandate. You are watching NTA Network News. Wife of the President, Aisha Buhari, leads others to give respite to the less privileged. Details when we come back. If you hear a bomb explosion or gunshots of an active shooter, that might be a terror attack. At such times, always remember three action words. Run, hide, report. Don't try to run towards the terror scene to save the situation because there might be a second bomb blast or another attack. Run far away and take cover. Make sure you are safe first. Yes, it is in our nature to sympathize over the hurt. But remember, only trained personnel can help in such situations. When in a secured environment, at home, some cleaners don't kill germs. Others kill germs, but don't clean properly. The new Detol Multi-Surface Cleaner. 10 times better germ kill, 10 times better cleaning, and all day freshness. 10 times better cleaning and germ kill for a healthy home. Deto, endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Glow is in the air. It's data. It's what you use every time you download music. It's what streams movies. It's what the banks use to check your account. It's the very lifeblood of modern living. Data. And where does it all come from? According to industry sources, more and more of it came from here. They acknowledge that Glow is now the largest data network in Nigeria. With your own Glow One submarine cable linked seamlessly to tens of thousands of kilometers with your own fiber optic cable. Glow can provide huge data capacity anywhere at a more flexible and affordable price than anyone. It's simple. So you see, Glow is in the air. It's everywhere. Say hello to the Grandmaster. Enjoy our new data overload. Double your data on every plan, like 6 gigabytes for 2,000 Naira, 12 gigabytes for 3,000 Naira, and 24 gigabytes for 5,000 Naira. Dial star 777 hash to select a plan. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. I have long to and which they rightly deserve. The leader today that we have in Nigeria is one the world has been waiting for. Nigeria is seen in a new and a different, very positive light. With what uh, President Mohamed Buhari is doing, our economy will be strong and resilient to withstand the shocks. He wants the best for this nation. We want the best for this nation. Our aspirations should be to put this country first and together we shall make progress. If we don't believe in our own country, nobody will believe in our own country. So we must make sure that we continue with the trajectory. We don't want to make a mistake of the past. This president has a singular opportunity to make that difference because the whole country is behind him. And by the grace of Almighty God and the sheer will and determination of the Nigerian people, we will come out stronger and more united than ever. Glad to have you join us. And we begin this segment with security matters. Lake Chad Basin member nations of Nigeria, Cameroon, in Abuja, Ogechipol. NTN News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Army has renewed commitment to enhancing security in the Niger Delta region. This was at a meeting of the officers, general officers commanding, presided over by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Burtai, at the Army headquarters. Defense correspondent Mohammed Abdul Kadri reports. Top on the agenda of the meeting was the review of the operations in the Niger Delta region to be in tandem with the government's new directive. Briefing journalists on the outcome of the meeting, the general officer commanding 82 Div, 
Major General Ibrahim Atairu says, Of recent there have been attacks on Nigerian troops in the Niger Delta. That At the Air Force Base in Abuja, defense correspondent KG Busari Hagmut reports. Last few months, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has inaugurated several projects across the Air Force formations, which include residential and office accommodations, schools, as well as gymnasium and several others. For instance, the gym to be able to exercise, to be able to remain fit and alert, to be called upon any time for the operations that are ongoing in the country. Once you properly exercise yourself, you are up and do, you can be able to what, carry rifle, move from, move from point A to point B. You can chase an enemy from any angle. The Chief of Policy and Plans, Air Vice Marshal James Boom, added that the newly inaugurated projects are the Nigerian Air Force Base. Harry, who urged for the judicious utilization of the commodity, said similar items will be provided from time to time to cushion the effect of the hardship faced by the people. The governor of the state and his wife expressed delight with the gesture, adding that it will go a long way in alleviating the suffering of the people in the state, especially the victims of insurgency. Your personal presence is a manifestation of your concern for the less privileged in the society, especially women and children. We are aware of your numerous humanitarian activities across the country and we are convinced that you are indeed a mother to the nation. While at the palace of the... Challenges in their own country. Secretary of the Presidential Initiative for the Northeast, Umar Gulani, advised the refugees to be law-abiding and protect the brotherly relationship of both countries. The DIFA region secretary general and other village heads commended the Nigerian government's support at this crucial time. The Nigerian delegation with representatives of NEMA and the Bruno State and that of Bruno State also visited the central hospital DIFA to sympathize with victims recently attacked by the Boko Haram in Yabi, one of the communities hosting Nigerian refugees. Turning our attention to agriculture, the federal government is supporting rice farmers in 12 states of the Federation with heavy duty farm implements to further boost rice production in the country. This is coming as the federal government plans to ban importation of equipment that can be fabricated locally. Musa Baba Leo reports. The support coming from the federal government is expected to address some of the challenges associated with cultivation of rice in 12 producing states. The farmers are to benefit from 500 units of treasures and 100 units of tillers. The benefiting states are Kanu, Neja, Kebi, Jigawa, Katsina and Adamawa. Others are Anambra, Baelsa, Enugu, Ebonyi, Oyo and Taraba. Because this machine uh, can do between 10 to 15 metric tons you know, per day. We feel enthused that this is coming to us at this point. Our people are prepared. Audu Ogwe said the initiative is part of measures being taken to diversify the economy and make Nigeria self-sufficient in rice and wheat production. He said the government is also coming up with a policy that will support local fabrication of farm implements in the country. Between the Bank of Industry, the Central Bank and so on, they're going to set standards and feel on what kind of metal can be used and what kind of fabrication we must have so these machines can endure. For this implement that is being uh, fabricated by the National Center for Agricultural Mechanization in Ilorin will go a long way in assisting our farmers towards uh, mass production of food. Beneficiaries of this heavy duty equipment are to provide 40% of the total cost of each machine, while government is responsible for 60% of the cost. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Bishop Has Matthew Hassan Kuka says his foundation has concluded plans to fix the problems of Nigeria by engaging citizens, especially public servants, in debates on policy issues that impact their lives. He made this known at a news briefing at the Kuka Center in Abuja. Saliu Abdullahi has the report. 
Bishop Hassan Kuka, who is the founder of the Kuka Foundation, spoke on some burning national issues, especially comments from some quarters on President Muhammad Buhari's trip abroad. There are various presidents and heads of state elsewhere who have been sick and they have died and so on. But no, no country breaks into song and dance and ridicule uh, the way things happen. In, and for me, they are very troubling. But I think for me, I think the responsibility we have is to pray for our president. The Kuka Center is designed to operate on three cardinal principles of the podium, both sides, and monthly policy roundtable to fast track the initiative of fixing Nigeria project. Through these initiatives, the Kuka Center hopes to elevate the quality of political discourse in our country by generating ideas through a robust and informed engagement between public officials and citizens, and in the process, deepening our democracy. The maiden edition of the center's project is expected to begin on June 16, 2016, with a town hall forum featuring the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, in Abuja, Salehu Abdullahi, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Heavy rains and flood in Lagos. Over now to Vera for details in our Lagos Network Center. Thank you, Fumi. Good to have you join us here in Lagos. Heavy rains in Lagos today left most parts of the metropolis covered with floods. Jennifer Igwe visited areas like Habat Makoli, Makoku, and Hamad Velu Way where floods cast great luck. Broken down vehicles, stranded road users, and flooded metropolis characterize the challenges Lagos residents faced today as a result of hours of intense rainfall. The downpour affected economic and social activities in some parts of the state. This morning I have been inside rain. Look at my shoe, you can see. Inside rain. Nobody expected this kind of a rain because even in the morning there was no indication that it would rain, but suddenly the thing just came up. Since morning that the rain started, most of us we laid to go to, to work and look at the way hold up full all over everywhere. Lagos residents say blocked drainage channels and bad roads aggravated the challenge associated with intense rainfall and flooding. The gutters, they have to clean them and then expand everything well so that everywhere will be moving and everybody will be fine. At least we had drainage systems around on the road. At least the waters will be able to flow out. They should try as much as possible to make sure that uh, there are drainages you know, all over the whole places. So that any time you know, it rains like this, there wouldn't be much you know, flood like this. The Lagos State Commission of Environment, Babatunde Adeja, advised residents in flood-prone areas to relocate during the rainy season. In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. As Nigeria toughens its stance on corruption and insecurity to ensure a sustainable economic development, the role of proper records and archives management in addressing these challenges has been emphasized. The event was the International Archives Day celebration organized by the Lagos State Records and Archives Bureau in Lagos. Jane Ojuku has the details. Corruption, insecurity, and other criminal tendencies which have continued to hamper economic development of the nation have been partly blamed on lack of proper records keeping and archive management. Commending Lagos State Government on its strides in this regard, the guest speaker, Femi Falano, SAN, explained that Nigeria has a lot to benefit from proper records keeping and archives management, particularly in combating insecurity, financial, and land related crime. The government must profile criminal suspect. If a criminal suspect is taken to prison, if he's released, his movement must be monitored for months or a year. Lagos State Governor, represented by the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Steve Ayorinde, explained that the state government is committed to strengthening the state records and archives management bureau to a world-class standard. It has been very helpful. Uh, there is still a lot more to be done, uh, particularly in digitizing uh, record keeping and, and archive in Nigeria. Issue of falsification of age, issue of falsification of uh, documents, you know, has been greatly reduced because you know there is proper documentation now, and um, most of it, most of it is computerized and integrated. I will learn to keep record, and as a Nigerian, know about what our forefathers has done. Archivists and the public took turns to share information on their activities. 
The event created a platform for them to network and synergize with the Lagos State Records and Archives Management Bureau. In Lagos, Jane Ojuku, NTA News. We take a break now. The news continues shortly after this time out with Fumi in Abuja. Stay with us. A famous boxer once said, the fight is won long before you step into the ring. It takes massive investment, dedication, planning, and during fierce competition, never backing down. In 2005, Glow invested in the world's only privately owned undersea data cable, then connected this to its extensive fiber optic network throughout Nigeria, which seamlessly delivers flexible and affordable data plans for everyone, making Glow Nigeria's largest data network in new subscriptions. You see, it's not what you step into the ring with that makes you the master. It's everything you did to get you there. Enjoy our new data overload. Double your data on every plan, like 6 gigabytes for 2,000 naira, 12 gigabytes for 3,000 naira, and 24 gigabytes for 5,000 naira. Dial star 777 hash to select a plan. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. My son will make winning a habit only when he beats me. Not when I let him win. After all, habits are not made in a day. Neither are they made easily. So the day he beats me, I will win too. Only a mother knows the importance of good habits. That's why I give him Cadbury Bone Vita every day. Umaru, you need to give me discounts on this coupon. Ah. You do like a wolf. You wear the couplet now. It's the salads you suppose they use. Buy your Etisla SIM today and enjoy these massive bonuses. Recharge 200 Naira and above and enjoy 150% bonus to call all Etisla lines. Recharge up to 1,000 Naira and above in a month and get 25% of all your recharges. Etisla, now you're talking. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. And we begin this segment with the business news. The National Bureau of Statistics says the informal sector boosted Nigeria's economy by 58.82% of the gross domestic product in 2015. Here is Chia Zalamekie on our business news segment. Many thanks for joining us. The World Bank has cut Nigeria's economic growth forecast for this year, citing weakness from oil output and latest hostilities from the Niger Delta Avengers. The bank, in its semi-annual Global Economic Prospects report, expects Nigeria to grow by 0.8%, down from an estimate of 4.6% in January. Variations in uh, a commodity shouldn't have such far-reaching impact in the whole economy if we got our acts together. We have been talking about diversification of the economy. We should go beyond lip service. We should go beyond sloganeering. We should be able to bring about those interventions that would incentivize production in non-oil sectors. And facts have emerged that financing Nigeria's current account deficit is to $2.01 billion in the fourth quarter of 2015. Net investment inflows on the financial account were negative at $1.13 billion. In the meantime, the National Bureau of Statistics says that the informal sector accounted for 48% of other services GDP in 2015. The informal sector accounted for 92% of crop production GDP, 89% of livestock, 72% of forestry, 
87% of fishery and 0% of crude petroleum and gas. And finally, a quick look at how the equities market fared at the end of trading. And that concludes business news segment. I'm Chia Zalamekie. Network News continues. Please stay with us. Many thanks, Chia Zalam. Tackling criminality leads contributions from our Port Harcourt Center. Ogwa is our guide for the evening. Good evening, Ogwa. Good evening, Kumi, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The River State Governor, Yesum Wike, has called for the support of the state judiciary in the war against criminal activities. The instance was at the presentation of official cars to seven magistrates in the state. Hogedinye Query has the report. The presentation of the official cars was an opportunity by the governor to remind the state judiciary of government's efforts in the war against criminality and caution them against the rejection of case files. He explained that about four hectares of land has been acquired for the construction of judges' accommodation. This uh, I want to ask people to be proposing more taxes. The official cars are expected to spur the magistrates to greater performance. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. So for me, that's a bit from this end. is back to you for the rest of the news. Good evening. Many thanks. The Nigerian Communications Commission says plans are in top gear for the implementation of a national mobile roaming scheme that will help operators in the country strengthen their operations and compete favorably. The Executive Vice Chairman, NCC, Professor Umar Garba Dambata, made this known at a consultative forum on national roaming scheme in Abuja. Olajide Bello reports. The consultative forum on national roaming scheme put together by the Nigerian Communications Commission was an avenue to brainstorm on the operational models for implementing a national roaming scheme to be adopted by its service providers. The Executive Commissioner of Technical Services, Ubale Maska, who stood in for the Executive Vice Chairman, said it is expected that national roaming will further promote seamless communication for subscribers as they will be able to roam on the network of other service providers where theirs is not available. In this forum, the Commission will give you the opportunity to further discuss and deliberate on these issues associated with the national roaming in order to ensure that the right regulatory decisions are taken for the overall growth of the industry. The Assistant Director of Legal and Regulatory Services, Helen Obi, highlighted some issues for comments by players in the sector. Viability of inter-operator national roaming in Nigeria. Possibility of having national roaming on a non-reciprocal basis. So that national roaming will make available a mobile interface platform that um, mobile users can have on their phones that will prompt for a switch to an alternative network. There were inputs from representatives of service providers and methodologies to be adopted to enhance smooth implementation of the national mobile roaming in Nigeria, in Abuja, or Lajide, Bello, NTA News. On the global scene, President Barack Obama endorses first female United States presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. We'll fill you in when we come back. Alwayses, alwayses. We have lived together as brothers and sisters since long time in Moriva, without no mind that we have spoken different languages and celebration our cultural and diversity. No bombing, no courtism, no kidnapping. Nowadays our children are trampoline to courtes. Today we are suspicion one another. All this notorious behavior have scattered all over Nigeria. When are you going to change? More. When are you going to stop? Terrorism are unwanted visitors. 
kidnapping a criminal. Cultism are barbaric. Do not destroy this country, oh. Our country, Nigeria, are blessed, oh. Are you see what I'm saying? Support Nigerian police force in their civil war against terror, kidnapping, and cultism. Report any bad move around you. See and do not talk until old age. And to hear and does not behavior until small begin. All of us have, have the duty of building Nigeria, Nigeria free of crime that, that are our dream. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force. The production, distribution, and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeit and cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari, and his team are committed to this fight. The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to reach the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. And for news on the global scene, let's join Talatu Izurike. President Ogbova's endorsement of Hillary Clinton as presidential candidate of the Democratic Party comes on the heels of a held meeting with Senator Bernie Sanders, who has been contesting the race with Hillary Clinton. The president says that Hillary Clinton is the most qualified person for the job. From Africa, Liberia has again won the fight against Ebola. This follows the past required 42 days test, showing that the last infected person no longer has the virus. A great feat for Africa. Similarly, Microsoft founder Bill Gates launched a poultry farming project to empower poor families in sub-Sahara Africa. He promised to donate 100,000 chickens for the project that will yield good money for beneficiaries. And in Kenya, a total of 302 police officers have been sacked for refusal to be vetted in a process that began in 2013 to root out corruption. That is the Long Global Tidbits, Talat Izariki, NTA News. Turning to sports, federal government to immortalize late former Super Eagles coach Stephen Kershey as 15 main organizing committee on 19th National Sports Festival is inaugurated in Abuja. Ayodeji Makinde has more. As Nigerians continue to pay tribute to the late former captain and coach of the Super Eagles, Stephen Keshi, who died Wednesday at the age of 54 in Benin, Youth and Sports Development Minister Solomon Dalun says efforts are underway to immortalize the man who coached Nigeria to the 2013 Afghan glory. I have started wide consultation with stakeholders for a memo to be presented to the Federal Executive Council for a befitting immortalization of late Stephen Keshi with one of our sporting edifices in this country. In the quest to have a successful 19th National Sports Festival in Calabar, Cross River State, scheduled for November this year, Minister of Youth and Sports Development Solomon Dalun has instituted a 15-man main organizing committee. Inaugurating the committee in Abuja Thursday, Dalun called on the committee to work out modalities for a remarkable outing for the athletes and officials. Following the poor performance of the Nigeria cricket team at the ICC World League Division 4 qualifiers in Jersey Island, United Kingdom, President of the Nigeria Cricket Federation, Emeka Onyama, has disbanded the men's national team and sacked the coach, Utie Ogbimi. A new team and a coaching crew will be announced and communicated accordingly in the wake of the proposed Northwest African tournament. The 15th edition of the UEFA European Championship is set to kickstart Friday in France. Thank <laughs> you.